It's Champions League Immortals with the one and only Michael Owen. As a Ballon d'Or winner, Michael, you know all about top individual awards, but you're about to bestow an even bigger accolade on 11 players by selecting them in your all-time European dream team. So let's start with the goalkeeper. Who are you going with? <laughs> I'm going controversial straight <laughs> away, I think. Uh, not much pedigree in terms of winning the Champions League, Rio, but I just think on pure ability, Buffon. Buffon, yeah? Yeah. So he's not won it? He's not won it. That, in a lot of people's teams, that went against them. And I can totally understand why. I mean... You played with Casillas. I played with Casillas. I played with Van der Sar. Um, I was... Between them two, I was actually way more impressed with Van der Sar. You know, up close training, under, you know, just... You have a view of every player, don't you, before mm. you get to play with them. And then you train with them every day and your, your opinion goes up or down, let's say. It certainly went up with Van der Sar. Casillas... If I'm honest, in training, he didn't wow me. I didn't think what, but in games, he, which is the most important yeah. thing, he obviously did the business throughout his career. But I think Buffon, for pure ability, was the best of a lot of them. Mm. OK, can't argue with that. Right back, where are you going? Right back, I'm going Cafu. Um, yeah, a it's a bit of a blast from the past. What a player. But growing up, um, watching him play, it almost redefined you know, the right back. Um, spot you get tired watching them they're doing the <laughs> running. Uh, and he was just incredible in that Brazilian team as oh. well he was just uh, he, he, as I say he almost changed the role of a right back mm. so I know left side you've gone for one of your old teammates yeah Roberto Carlos another Brazilian yes he actually made my team I've got to be honest right okay at least we agree on one thing <laughs> yeah and again you know these two players playing for Brazil at the time you know, it was just, wow, the, the, probably the best two full-back stroke wing-backs in the world at the time. Uh, is he the best left-back you ever played with? Yeah, he is. I mean, he could defend, he could attack. Again, loads of energy, good pass through the ball, read the game well, um, could score goals, mm. scored some unbelievable goals. So he was pretty... I mean, he... Ashley Cole, I did think about, but I thought Carlos was, uh, mm. was worthy of it. So the middle of the defence, who are keeping it tight at the back for you, I know you're yeah. for this man, which is in most people's teams. Is he now, right, OK. Maldini. Yeah, uh, absolutely Who's next to him? the game. I'm going to put Ramos next to him, Marie. yeah. Um, again, it, I'm almost talking in riddles because Buffon never won it. Mm. And I'm talking about, right, well, winning so many, you've got to go win it type of thing. Yeah. So, um, But he's a great player. People don't give him as much credit. Who, Maldini? I know Ramos. Ramos okay. I think people don't give him as much credit as uh, mm. as he's due because of other factors. You know, he gets sent off a lot. He, you know, he's injured one or two players, things like that. I mean, how many goals he oh. scored as a defender as well is is you've got to point that out. Big game temperament. Massive game temperament. Massive game. Uh, whenever he's missing, you can see it. You know, he does this. He throws himself in front of the ball. He scores goals. He's you know he's just been a rock for so many years. Actually, I've got. A, they were trying to get me out, Real Madrid. One day said to me. Um, do you want to stay or do you want to leave? I said, well, I think I want to go back to the Premier League. Mm. They said, OK, we'll go quickly because we're waiting, to, uh, waiting for the money to pay for Ramos. Oh. They literally sold me and used the money to pay for him. So they uh, should really be later. thanking you. <laughs> so Madrid fans should be thanking <laughs> me for all this. Get rid of me. And uh, he probably scored more goals than me as well. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, he, was, uh, he is a great player. Maldini, on the other hand, I mean, you've got to go back in your memory to, uh, to remember what a great player he was. Mm. But... Wow, was he a good player? Um, you'll appreciate him more than me, probably being a defender. But again, reading of the game, unbelievable left foot, won, won everything. Mm, and he was I good agree. looking as well, wasn't he? Yeah, oh, <laughs> everyone said that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so midfield, what shape are you going for first and foremost? Well, I was dictated to by the players that I wanted to play. So I'm going to play with a sitter, two either side, and then sort of one in behind two. So a bit of a diamond. OK, really. so who's the sitter then? Give me him first. I'm going to go Xavi. Um, oh, yes. He was just... He was in my team you know, as well. He's, he's uh, just poetry in motion, isn't he? To oh. watch him, great pass with the ball, um, found space, you know, just set things off. He was just, he, he was the orchestrator of the whole mm. team, wasn't he? Just an, an unbelievable talent. I know you've got his teammate in yesterday yeah. in there with him, who I had as well. We've got quite similar here Mo, at the moment. Great minds and all that, yeah. <laughs> Well, in the Esther, a little bit different to him. Obviously, you know, we play a bit further forward. When you see some of his show reels, his touch, his awareness, his balance, and everything about him, creativity, scorer of big goals. Mm. Um, that duo, 
for me, when I was sort of playing, it was almost like they were that, how can we get as good as this Barcelona the benchmark. team? It was. It was the absolute benchmark. And uh, he was uh, pivotal in that. Talking about a benchmark, personally for you in a Liverpool team, yeah. you've got your mate, yeah. Steven Gerrard. Talk to me, how good was this guy? Like on, in, on the big nights, big moments... What did he mean to you and your team? It's it's not certainly not because he's my mate. He's he's getting in there. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll go on to talk about one of the best players I played with um, a little bit later. But he was right up there. If I could play in a World Cup final tomorrow, when I said right, I want one player in my generation to play, I would just have to say, ten years old. In the uh, in was the, he always that good? And he that influential. Always, he was always very very good but i think his his physical development and great passer great vision great awareness you know he had all that crunch and tackler of the ball you know he he was he was amazing in every single way but as he got older he got stronger and he got bigger and he just became an animal i mean he would literally he? run past people he was strong he could score goals create goals tackle head left foot right foot play him in any position the guy was just a, a freak. What, what, about, freak. what about his leadership? Was he always a leader? As a kid, you said you played with him so. 10, but is he, he grew into it, yeah? Steve, he's naturally quite a shy lad. Yeah. And I think he's developed and, and grown these leadership skills. Certainly towards the end of his career at Liverpool, he was a real mm. leader. Now he's gone on to becoming a manager, obviously. But at the outset, he wouldn't have been one of the loudest in the, in the dressing room. Mm. Um, I think quite naturally, he's a little bit shy, but he's developed into one. Mm. So again, to finish off your quartet in midfield, you've gone for an ex-teammate. Who is it? Zidane. Ooh. Zidane's going to go in there as a as a number ten. Where is he? He's in it. Serious. Yeah. Zizou? He's. Uh, wow. I mean that quartet. Oof. Yeah. Those last two players, are the best two players I ever played with. Yeah. Zidane was. I can only ex- describe as you know when you were a kid and you had one of those balls on the end of a rope and the ball just never went more than a metre <laughs> and a half away. He, he, he had that rope, but it was just invisible. I mean, he was just everything that he did oozed class. The Jimmy, he had people he had, laying down on the pitch. Look, he had pace as well. Really, honestly, people don't even realise he would do this. <laughs> You're always nervous about what he was thinking. Mm. Um, but of all the great players, all the Galacticos that were in the dressing room when I walked in there, he was the one that I was most sort of. Mm. In awe of, let's say, even though there was a Ronaldo, you know, just more so, not not just his ability, but more so, you know, the way he acted, the way he was really quiet and just sort of stared at everyone at the top of his house. Like, I don't want to uh, disappoint Zidane. Right, let's go to the top two. The, we're at the sharp end of it all. We know you, you you're picking here. Yeah. Just give me a little a bit well, of insight into how, why. How on earth can't we be picking the likes of, you know, Brazilian Ronaldo and Thierry Henry, but we're not. We're picking the two, probably the two greatest players of all time. We are absolutely blessed to have been in, in uh, born in the same era as these people. Mm. You were even luckier. You got to play with Ronaldo. I got to play against them both, but and I had to take Ronaldo's shirt number seven as well straight after he left, which was a little bit heavy. I've still got a sore back from that. But <laughs> what can you say? How I would mean, they play together then in this team? The front two. Well, it is fantasy, isn't it? Mm. I mean, I've not even thought about tactics. I've just put the best players in. But, I mean, you'd have to say nowadays Ronaldo will be the, the furthest one forward. You'd probably put Zidane and Messi in behind him, maybe even. Um, yeah, I mean, it's an attacking team, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. But, I mean, my view on it is that Messi is the most naturally gifted player we've ever seen. Um just simply was born to play football. Mm. Whereas Ronaldo, you've just got to take your hat off to him because despite him being naturally, of course, he's brilliant. But he has managed to work his way through sheer guts, sheer drive, uh, dedication. Still to this day, you know, gets in before everyone else, leaves after them, his diet, everything about him is professional. I remember going over to Madrid, you know, I don't know, five, six, seven, eight years ago to present him with the, with the Ballon d'Or on the pitch. I got given a tour of the new, uh, the new dress training ground and it was about seven o'clock at night. I was walking around. There was one person and one physio in the dressing room at the time as I was getting the tour around and he was getting a massage and doing all his stretches and doing all his routine at about seven o'clock at night. And it was like, and Buck Tregenio, who was giving me the tour around, said, this is just normal. You can't get him out of the place. I just, wow. I don't, and it just shows you why he's been so great for so long. He's got the dedication mm. as well as the ability. Mm. Well, it's been fascinating seeing your team. Are you completely happy with your team? Can we leave it there? 
there's debates in there, I, I would argue, yeah, but I'm happy with it, yeah, you can't not be happy Good. with that, no, surely. Some fantastic players. Listen, Michael, thank you very much, thank you for your time, really enjoyed it. Thank you.